This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 906. Lessons Learned Through My Fitness Journey by Kathleen Trotter with oldpodcast.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Happy Monday. Welcome to the first full week of the new year. Thank you for being here and welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web, kind of like an ongoing audiobook. Now today, I'm narrating a guest post on our site, oldpodcast.com. It comes from Kathleen Trotter, a fitness expert, media personality, personal trainer, writer, and author of a couple of books. First, Finding Your Fit, a compassionate trainer's guide to making fitness a lifelong habit, and Your Fittest Future Self, making choices today for a happier, healthier, fitter future you. Kathleen has been a personal trainer and fitness expert for almost 20 years. So I'm excited to share her post with you. And I'm sure you're excited to hear it. So let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Lessons Learned Through My Fitness Journey by Kathleen Trotter with oldpodcast.com. Because I'm a personal trainer and the current version of me loves to run and lift weights, People assume it must mean that I have always been into health and fitness and grew up playing sports and was born motivated. False. Nothing could be further from the truth. I was a chubby and awkward adolescent. I was taller and larger than everyone, including all the boys. I hated my body and had microscopic levels of self-esteem. I would do anything to get out of gym class. I often cried or faked being sick in an attempt to get to go home. I snuck food. I used to tell my mom I wanted to walk home from school to get fresh air when, really, I just wanted to stop and buy fries at the chip wagon. Not my proudest moments. The turning point. My life began to change when my mom bought me a YMCA membership. The experience was really the nascence of the cornerstone of my fitness philosophy, which is frame daily motion as a non-negotiable. How you are active is up to you. Match your health plan to your personality and life realities. I hated being active with my peers, but the demographic at the Y was mostly people under five and over 40, so I felt comfortable enough to at least go and walk on the treadmill. Walking snowballed into weights and running, which snowballed into exercise classes, which snowballed into teaching fitness classes, running marathons, and a desire to make health and wellness a life passion and career. The lesson being, don't wait for the perfect day to become active or the perfect diet to start eating vegetables just start. Little wins spiral into bigger wins. The only moment you have control over is now. So get up and go for a walk or drink some water. Just do something. Sure, I have phases where I pay less attention to my diet, but I have never reverted back to the girl who would lie to the clerk at Subway about buying a foot-long sub to share with a friend, when really, she had every intention of consuming the entire thing. I try not to feel guilt when I don't make the best choice, or let one chocolate snowball into 10 chocolates. I have one treat, not 10. When I do end up having 10 of something, it does happen, I work to understand why. Then I set up systems to save myself from my future lesser self so I don't make the same mistake next time. For example, I have learned I love fudge ice cream bars too much to have them in my house. I eat the entire box. So I store a stash at my mom's. When I want one, I go there, have a visit, and enjoy one or two instead of the entire box. I have been on my health journey for just over 20 years, in large part because I have developed a toolbox of healthy habits and tools, including a growth mindset and resilience. That said, the truth is that the journey never becomes easy. One just gets better at navigating the ups and downs. Advice for your fitness journey. Tip number one. My advice to people listening is, Have realistic expectations. Know that we all slip sometimes. Adopting a healthier lifestyle is not about never falling. It is about learning to fall less intensely and course correcting faster. Replace the goal of health perfection, which simply sets you up for failure because perfection is not possible, with the goal of tending positive. Gradually change your health norms so you have more healthy habits this week, this month, and this year when compared to what you did last week, last month, or last year. Tip number two, stop the shame cycle. Putting yourself in a shame spiral 
For example, I ate this cookie, so I am worthless and might as well eat another one, is not compassionate or productive. Learn to note the problem, learn from it, and move on. Guilt can sometimes spur people into action. Shame is counterproductive and emotionally and physically damaging. Know the difference. And by guilt, I mean the feeling of regretting a specific action, as in saying to yourself, I wish I hadn't eaten that cookie. Shame, on the other hand, is correlating making a less than ideal choice with being a bad person. When you fall into the shame cycle, you get into a trap of thinking, I did X, therefore I am worthless. Feelings of worthlessness do not breed self-efficacy, positive feelings, or productive action. Tip number three, have a growth mindset. What does a growth mindset really mean? Think about it this way, the ability to non-judgmentally learn from every experience. Instead of berating yourself over a regrettable choice, note what you learned from the experience. Did you overeat at a party because you felt out of place or because you stood next to the food table or because you were too tired? Then learn from these experiences. Get back on your health horse as a more informed writer. Tip number four, learn to parent yourself. Schedule your life as you would your child's. Apply the same amount of mindfulness to your own nutrition as you would for a loved one. Talk to yourself in a way you would want your child or best friend to talk about themselves. After almost 20 years as a trainer, I have noticed a distinct pattern. Too often, there is a disconnect between what clients think is good enough for their loved ones and what is good enough for them personally. Too many people, especially mothers, can outline in detail the healthy choices they make for others, but find it nearly impossible to implement the same choices for themselves. You wouldn't expect your kids to eat food off your plate or snack before dinner or mindlessly grab a chocolate bar at three o'clock, but that is how most parents I work with feed themselves. Actively schedule your activities as you would your child's too. For general health, establish routines for yourself as you would for your family. For example, create sleep, morning, and bedtime routines that support your health goals. Life is a marathon. The main takeaway is this. Health doesn't just happen. You can't create new habits or reach your weight loss goal overnight. Also, hope is not a viable health strategy. Create realistic, individualized, and specific goals and an appropriate action plan. Remember that adopting a healthier lifestyle is a marathon, not a sprint. Give yourself time to develop new, healthier norms. Have a growth mindset. When you fall off your health horse, get back on ASAP and get back on as a more informed writer. Lastly, have fun. We only have one life. Find activities that you enjoy or at least something you don't despise doing. You just listened to the post titled Lessons Learned Through My Fitness Journey by Kathleen Trotter with oldpodcast.com. Now you can find more about her at kathleentrotter.com. Definitely check that out. And again, thank you to Kathleen for writing a post just for us. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Something really jumped out at me. At the end of Kathleen's post, she mentioned we only have one life and that we need to have fun. And don't get me wrong, I completely agree with that. But what I've experienced is sometimes people will use this as a quote-unquote excuse to make mm, not so great lifestyle decisions. For example, they'll say, you only live once, so I'd rather die eating what I like as opposed to eating lots of vegetables. Or, we only have one life, so I would rather spend it doing what I want to do instead of on a treadmill. How do you argue with that, right? Well, here's the deal. What we have to do is reframe that mindset a little bit. For example, I would say you probably like having money in your bank account, right? Well, if you don't follow a healthy lifestyle now, guess where that money is going to go later on? It's probably going to go to prescriptions or surgeries or other treatments to help you get over whatever illness you may be experiencing. And I know that sounds really harsh, and I try not to make it sound like that's definitely gonna happen to you, of course, because there are many times when that never happens to a person, even if they smoke for 60 years or they never exercise a day in their life. Magically, they'll live to be 100, right? But for many of us, when we look at the data, if we don't take care of our bodies now, it's gonna potentially lead to disease later. And we know diseases are costly. And if we really break it down and think about how much time you're really going to spend taking care of yourself, it's actually not that much. Let's say you work out an hour a day. 
That's one hour out of the 23 other hours that you have. Well, I know you're probably gonna argue, well, it takes time to get to the gym. I gotta shower, change, all of that stuff, drive back to work, back home. So let's say the entire thing takes two and a half hours. And that still leaves you with, uh, if I do my math right, another 21 and a half hours to do with what you want. And as Kathleen mentioned, with those other 21 and a half hours, schedule your activities. Find time to do just maybe one tip that Kathleen shared with you. That's it. Because as she's experienced, and honestly, as I've experienced, just a little bit can start to snowball into something really, really tremendous. All right, that'll do it for the Monday episode. I hope you have a wonderful start to your week, and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember your optimal life awaits.